Great. So quickly, Christine Edens, that's me. I will be facilitating the meeting tonight. Um, thank you for coming here. Are, are, are there any elected officials joining us this evening? Hi, Patty. Hi, Dale. I'm uh, one of the commissioners for the Nurse City Water District. Thank you. I always like uh, elected officials to have an opportunity to say hello to their constituents and for you to say hello to them. And then staff. Can staff with a name tag wave, please? All of these kind folks, they have the badge of honor to say, I'm here to help you tonight. So please seek them out when we turn you back over after the presentation to the open house time to help answer your questions one-on-one -on -one if you feel more comfortable uh, in that setting and or just to ask questions about how to provide your feedback tonight, which is why we're here. Uh, quick housekeeping item as well. We have a few handouts for you tonight. They're at the sign-in table and I'll also go through these later in the presentation to remind you. You also may have had an opportunity to grab a comment card. You're welcome to fill that out. You're welcome to comment on anything you see tonight, uh, as well as a Q&A card. So we're going to go through this presentation, and we'll have some time for questions and answers. We like to use those cards to help us get through that Q&A session. Some people aren't super comfortable raising their hand and waving and asking and saying those questions out loud. We like to equalize that process a little bit. And then it also helps us have a visual of how many questions we need to get through so we can keep ourselves and all of you moving through those questions so we get to as many as possible. It also helps us lump some of those questions together because we often get similar ones as we go. So to know, make sure you're in the right place, we're here to talk about 175th Street from just west of I-5 to Stoneway, which is not really a cross section to uh, 175th Street, but it's essentially just before City Hall here. So you're, we're right on the project corridor. We're right in the project area. Uh, and we're here to learn more from you tonight. We have information to share, but we're really trying to understand more of, about this corridor that the data we're going to present to you really can't tell us. Uh, I'm assuming all of you are here because you use, live, work, do business nearby 175th, so you are our experts and we're here to learn from you tonight. Quick agenda review. You've already gone through the welcome and sign in, thank you for that. You've completed your first exercise of the night. Uh, we're doing the presentation now. You're gonna get to hear from Don Ranger, the project manager, uh, Dan Hansen and Tara Olson with the um, technical team. And then we're going to turn you back to the open house after the Q&A session so you have time to provide the feedback. And really the purpose of this presentation is to orient you to all the information you'll see out in the room. It's not necessarily to walk you through all the numbers and the data, because I think we'd all fall asleep and that's not so fun. But we want to make sure you're aware of what you are able to see out in the room to inform your feedback. And also we acknowledge a lot of these technical diagrams are very hard to see up on the screen. So again, it's just to show you what's in the room and then you can go view those in person and more intimately after our presentation. I think with that, I get to turn it over to Don. All right, thank you, Christine. Um, so, as Christine mentioned, my name is Don Ranger. I'm a project manager here with the City of Shoreline, and I have a tendency to let this microphone drift away. So, <laughs> if you can't hear what I'm saying, uh, please let me know. I might, it's not intentional. So, as she mentioned, uh, this project's all about 175th Street. It's a very important roadway for Shoreline and the region. Um, it connects some of our most uh, well-used north-south streets, uh, Aurora Avenue, State Route 99, Meridian Avenue North, I-5, of course, and all the way over to 15th Avenue um, in the North City District. Uh, this is a very busy, well-used corridor. We see nearly 30,000 vehicles a day uh, use this section of roadway plus many more pedestrians, a few cyclists. Uh, we do have bus routes on this area. And it's, it's important to not just this neighborhood, but just shoreline in general. So how do we get here? Why do we choose to do something and even talk about this particular stretch of road? This began many years ago. Back in 2011, our transportation master plan, um, a document that looks citywide at projects and ideas and needs identified this corridor as something that is expected to need improvements in the near term and for the future of Shoreline. Um, consequently, the next year in our 2012 citywide comprehensive plan was 
which looks at things well beyond the scope of just transportation projects, identifying the need to do further work and further evaluation of this roadway. Uh, these uh, documents, as well as our citywide complete streets policies, that uh, advise staff to look at these projects not just through the lens of uh, drivers or buses or cyclists or pedestrians, uh, but all of the above uh, for all projects. These things are uh, influencing how we look at it and how we evaluate this project and why we're doing it. So, uh, with all those things supporting uh, work to be done out here, we sought uh, federal grant funds to allow us to do design in a robust manner. Uh, so uh, last year, we, we were successful in getting those uh, federal grant funds, and we're launching into design now. Um, so we have been working on this project. Our team's been busy uh, looking at the, the current conditions of traffic, safety, and environmental uh, improvements along the corridor that kind of set a tone and a baseline for um, what we need to consider going forward. Uh, but also, as Christy noted, we're so early in this process, we haven't started the design. We don't, we brought along a, a big map on that central table that is largely blank. We're not proposing any changes here yet. Um, the reason we're doing so is we need your help to do that. We want to make sure that our project has identified the correct goals so that, and the correct needs and context, so we're seeing things through your eyes, through your experiences, and we can make, uh, off, we can present options at a later time uh, founded in those ideas. So, one of our goals for the, for the project is to enhance safety and mobility for all uh, modes of travel. Uh, to accomplish this, we're looking at uh, options such as completing the sidewalk network, improving transit access, providing east-west connections for uh, people biking, reducing traffic congestion, and developing a design that's supportive of the overall community's vision and needs. Uh, but this is more than just a, uh, a corridor project. It's also a way of meeting um, the community's vision, not just for this neighborhood, but citywide and how this fits into that larger context. Uh, so I'm gonna come back a little later and chat about some, some timeline issues and other things and participate in the Q&A session. But now I'm going to turn it over to Dan and Tar more. Thank you, Don. Um, I'm Dan Hansen, um, consultant who's been hired to lead the technical side of the project. And um, Tar, I'll hear talking in a little, little bit here about some more of the details of traffic and safety. Um, but I just want to kind of give you a context of um, the uh, the project as a whole and. Uh, it's an important corridor, as Don has mentioned, and really the goal of this project is to improve safety and for all modes, whether it's bikes, uh, pedestrians, vehicles, and the uh, company of the buses that are uh, going to be along the corridor as well. Um, a number of physical challenges that I'll get into here in a minute, but I just want to give you some context. I've got to point your finger at me. Flip it around. Flip it around. Don't point at my eye. So kind of starting at the on the, at the west end, we have you know, the city hall and uh, the Trader Joe's development that has recently um, been redeveloped, um, and a couple uh, apartment complex and, and um, condominiums that have the access to the facility or access to the road. And then we have a number of uh, in this area. I think it's one of the more challenging areas where we have homes that are their only access is out on 175th through the driveway or the cul-de-sac that's entering. So, and there's uh, the homes were like constructed in the 50s and 60s, and we've already seen a number of roadway improvements in there, so that it would really compromise what's going on out there today. So now we've got to accommodate some more improvements in this area. And I'll say that's probably one of the biggest challenges we have. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, there's no sidewalks on the north side of the corridor in this area as well, so uh, getting access back and forth is challenging. Uh, Meridian Park elementary and their students that are crossing through the uh, crosswalk at the, through the Wallingford uh, the church on the north side as well and then Ronald Bog and the uh, Thornton Creek that uh, goes through there as well so uh, some, some environmental sensitive areas and uh, actually we've got some soils conditions that are really challenging there and you notice the sidewalks I'll talk here in a minute um, but 
you know, ultimately ending up in I-5. We don't, we're not gonna be messing around with I-5 itself or the interchange. That property is not owned by the city, so it, uh, that's just under the control of the DOT, so. But we will look to make sure we are not hitting uh, traffic or uh, making it any worse up there. <laughs> uh, so these, here's some examples of things that we see, we saw as we were uh, walking into the site. Um, here's an area on the north side of missing sidewalk on the, um, I think that's, that's Ashworth up there. So I don't know if uh, any of you have walked the corridor, but uh, walking along there is like a two foot little uh, paved area between that and the Virginia wall. So a bus comes by or a car comes, truck comes by, you feel like you're in jeopardy. You know, we heard that from a number of the stakeholders and uh, residents that live along the area as being a big challenge. Uh, as well on the south side of the road as well. So a lot of like pedestrian issues and uh, non-conformity, I guess, in the uh, sidewalks there. Uh, th this is the uh, children's and family crossing at um, right three, uh, Wallingford at 3.30 in the afternoon, um, really backing up traffic and, and causing some issues there, but also the safety of the children is a challenge there. And there's not a lot of other protected crossings on there. We have Meridian, and um, there's nothing up this that will lead up to uh, close to 99. Um, there were some improvements that were made back in the, in the early 2000s, but, uh, and they were really just uh, put in just to get some consistency and trying to make some improvements. But uh, we, as you can see, this is a very narrow gap between the sidewalk and the uh, tree there and the, the sidewalks faulted and, and uh, it would be a really challenge for those with their disabilities to be able to get through there and with a wheelchair. Um, on the south side we have some of the similar type situations there as well so making improvements this is like between uh, <coughs> Meridian and the, the freeway so um, making that consistently there to make it uh, more accessible is going to be a key piece. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tara to talk about some of the uh, traffic and safety issues. Oh, I've got one more, sorry. And I think this is, this is more examples of like the sidewalk and uh, where we don't have sidewalks and whatnot. So. So what I'm going to be showing you here is basically the same boards that you see out in the foyer area. Um, you may have some difficulty seeing some of the information on here, but I'm just going to hit them real, some elements on them really quick, and I would love to talk to you more about them out with the boards. So this one is basically showing um, the bike, uh, sorry, bike and head facilities. Um, we've got a couple good north-south facilities. We've got. Um, the interurban trail, and then there is a future uh, trails by the rails that will be coming in next to Sound Transit, or that's something that's being looked at. Um, but there's a lot of um, incon inconsistent sidewalks between. You can show the photos of that. And we've also shown on here a lot of the bike counts that we've had out there. We did those both for a two hour period during the morning and the afternoon. So these are weekday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. We also have a board showing the different transit routes in the area. Uh, there's several transit routes that use this area, and as Dan showed in some of the photos, there's some limited facilities at those routes that we're gonna wanna take a look at and accommodate. We also have a collision history board that shows the different collisions that are out in the area. There's about th been 300 collisions out here in the last, sorry, if I was on my page, five years, thank you. Uh, so safety is something that we're going to be looking very closely at. You can see um, probably out, out there a little bit more about the types of collisions that have been occurring. And then we have a board that's looking at the traffic at the different intersections. So these are showing hourly counts, the highest hourly count in both the morning and the afternoon. They also have dots at each one of the intersections. A green dot indicates that it operates fairly well. Orange dot operates not quite so well. And then the red dot that you see at the uh, freeway is, yeah, okay. It goes without saying it's red for a reason. Oh, that was it. All right, it's me again. 
So, with all that being said, we, um, we, we really need to hear from you. We, we can look at this and have our consultants analyze this, this road from um, a data-driven perspective, but we're not out there living on this road, experiencing this road day to day. We need your input to make this project successful and to, to guide our, uh, our alternatives that we're going to bring back to you all uh, later on. So throughout this design process, um, we want to touch, uh, have, have contact in, with the community um, at various times and in various ways. So uh, along each um, of our phases, uh, we have three phases of work. We have this existing conditions data gathering phase, which we're initiating right now. Uh, phase two being uh, considering the design alternatives and evaluating those. And phase three uh, being identifying a preferred design concept. So each of those phases, we're going to be reaching out um, to, a, to the adjacent property owners, tenants, uh, businesses along the corridor to make sure that their voices are heard and that they're um, receiving um, information from the city as well. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to key institutions, uh, organizations, neighborhood groups um, for sit down conversations to make sure that we have that forum as well covered and we're um, having that dialogue. Uh, we're also going to reach out to the broader public in forums just like this, both through uh, written materials on our website, through online open houses, and in person uh, meetings such as this uh, to make sure we're capturing what we need to and giving you an opportunity and a voice. And our, our goal really is to develop and select a preferred design concept um, by early 2020, early next year. So to get through these steps, we're roughly speaking, phase one is happening now. We want to come back and have a similar meeting with you all um, in September-ish this fall sometime and discuss those preferred alternatives or those uh, design concepts. And then come back maybe in January or so of next year to uh, present to what we think is the preferred alternative and make sure that it's uh, vetted in public process and that uh, we're hearing that that's, that the community is comfortable with that. We would then take that to our city council uh, to, to get buy-in before we proceed into final design. Um, so today, we really need your help uh, understanding the existing conditions and your, your experiences on so uh, we're going to have opportunities for some Q&A here. We have places to, to voice your opinion on sticky notes and other, other places out there. I think Christine's probably going to do this part better. <laughs> Thanks, John. OK. So quickly, there were a couple folks that came in after we're almost done with the presentation. And if you have a friend or neighbor that comes a little later as well, we have co hard copies of the presentation at the sign-in table. I'm happy to walk anyone through the slides if you missed any part of the presentation. So, feedback. The most important reason that we're all here. So there are many ways to provide your feedback tonight. There's a roll plot in the center of the room that you see a photo of on uh, the screen. You're welcome to write anything you want to about your experience on this corridor, questions that you have that you want to see answered as we go throughout the preliminary design process, near misses you may have experienced, places on the sidewalk where you've tripped on a, on a crack or an um, elevated piece of the sidewalk because a street tree is growing through it, anything you want to tell us about your lived experience on 175th that you think is important for us to understand to inform those design concepts that we are yet to develop. That's how we get creative, is by hearing those stories. Um, there's also general comment cards. If you just want to write free form, open-ended comments, you can stick them right into the comment box. You'll see a picture of that on the screen as well, and they're out on the comment table for a, as a place for you to sit down. Uh, we have laptops here tonight, and I'll put the link on the screen, but over in this back left corner, we have laptops open to the online open house. That online open house has all the information you'll see physically around the room. It also has ways for you to provide the same feedback we're asking for tonight. Um, you're welcome again to speak to a member of our project team. They're happy to write down notes for you and stick those in the comment cards or in the comment boxes as well so we capture them that way. You can also email or call Don. We have some of his business cards tonight. I'll put his information up on the screen when we break out after the Q&A and I'll leave it there. And the last thing is this 
not the last thing, I've already mentioned it, but this is the URL for that online open house. So there are little takeaway cards at the sign-in table with this URL, so if you want to take one home after you've pondered your thoughts and as you think of a new thing after you leave tonight, please share this with your friends and neighbors as well and participate online. This is going to stay open for the next few weeks through June 14th. So there's plenty of time for you to process what thoughts you'd like to share and, and provide them that way as well. Um, there's one really important special board out in the lobby. So what we're asking for is, this, we call this a bit of a spectrum board. It's a dot exercise. There's a set of colored dots that you'll uh, get to use to help us understand your priorities. As you know, funding is very limited for capital projects like 175th. And it's important for us to understand what's important to you to prioritize in terms of gateway treatment, landscaping to pedestrian walkability, and traffic safety, traffic flow, and congestion. All of those different elements of that we can prioritize in the, in the design is on that board. So please do help us understand what you think 175th is here to do for you and your community. So here is when I plug the Q&A card. So if you did have a question that you've jotted down on one of those cards, please pass them to uh, Chelsea or another team member. They're happy to walk around and bring them up to us. If you need a card, please let us know as well and just wave your hand and we'll, we'll snag one for you and get you a pencil to write it down. Um, so as you're pondering those questions, our next steps are to really listen to your feedback and input. We'll refine those project goals and define criteria based on those priorities you provide us and also how we're going to move forward with design so we know how to evaluate the concepts, the creative ideas that the technical team will come up with. We'll come back in summer 2019 or fall um, to share those concepts we developed over summer and then move on again to that preliminary preferred concept in early 2020. So with that, please wave your cards and we'll come collect them. And if there are no questions, we'll just go to the open house. But I have a feeling there might be a few, so I'll let this linger for just a minute. I'll flip back to that while you're waiting for a pencil or a pen. Brianne, do you mind grabbing some more cards and pencils? Thank you, and are helping pass this out. This is the URL for the online open house. Um, I hope you can even help social share this on your own Facebook, Twitter. Great. And there are little takeaway cards, again, at the, help, at the sign in sheet for you to grab one of those as well. OK. I have some questions. Public meeting goals. Here we go. OK. Interesting. Raised walkway. I'm, a, I'm assuming a pedestrian overpass is what that means. So how expensive would it be to build or make a raised walkway, such as the walkway that crosses Aurora at 130th and Meridian and 175th? Cost. Do we have an idea? Yeah. Does anyone have a hat we can pass around? <laughs> no, raised overpasses. Um, but we're talking about the pedestrian style overpass, yeah. something like on Aurora. Um, those are on the order of millions of dollars. Um, you know, spitballing numbers, five to ten million dollars is, is that type of expense. Okay, so I'm going to grab another microphone so we don't have to keep passing the baton. We have to stay separated. Want to create feedback. Okay, transit to serve Lake Flag Rail. Maybe that's not going to work. One at a time, Don. Okay. Okay, transit to serve Link Light Rail stations. How can we get better transit on 175th? You might want to come this way. One of the. Uh, This corridor is served by transit agencies um, to a limited extent. The, the 301, I believe, runs a few Very buses a day uh, between Aurora and uh, the freeway. 
uh, and there's a little bit better service or more frequent service between Meridian and the freeway. Um, Region-wide, as light rail comes online, becomes the spine of our transit network, uh, the transit agencies are going to start allotting more service east and west to serve and get people to that light rail station. Um, and we already have talks with uh, King County Metro um, to, to provide better transit service throughout Shoreline. Uh, this project area, um, there's a bit of a chicken and an egg with transit service. They need facilities that are supportive of transit service before they show up, um, but there's also not a lot of users that are using transit if transit because doesn't exist. Because transit to use. Exactly. So, so part of this discussion is an evolving uh, iterative process where we need to find out from the public where they desire uh, transit service. Metro is doing the same thing in the community, and that we make informed decisions together. So part of that uh, doc exercise that Christine identified does ask about uh, transit priority on, on the corridor. So if that's something important to you, uh, please provide some feedback. OK, we are getting some comments. And I think they're really important. And we will save these as comments um, that I'll note. but. Um, for example, uh, can there be, again, that overhead street crossing access? We just talked about that. That, that We can look at that, but that would, again, be a very expensive uh, option. Um, pedestrian access to King County Library. There's currently really not great pedestrian or bike access to King County Library, which is on the east side of the corridor, just beyond our corridor limit, so that's a good comment. Um, Trees and prioritizing trees along the corridor. Can we do that? Yes. So that's also another line item on our dot exercise is how important to you is landscaping um, along the corridor. Um, that's something we consider, you know, oftentimes median islands or between sidewalks and the roadway itself. Um, we see that along Aurora and some other roadways. Um, it is a challenging proposition, and one of the things we don't have to share with this time is the cost, the ongoing cost of landscaping, but it is a hot topic, I would say, um, at a policy level in Shoreline, that it's not just the initial installation, but maintaining that to a high, high standard, uh, something we all want to be proud of um, is a cost of endeavor, so that's something that we'll probably have more information to consider uh, when we present alternatives and develop. Okay. I will save that one. Another comment here is um, having more enforcement of speeding, so photo enforced radar, ample signage to protect pedestrians and people driving out and onto 175th from the side streets. So concerns about safety, that's great. We will again save that as a comment. Quarter widening, is that a given? Is that going to happen? Not a given. This is truly a blank slate. Um, the ideas that are being thrown around about, I think we heard sidewalk improvements, I've probably heard that from everyone I've spoken with so far, that make that connectivity. Even a small scale improvement like adding a sidewalk does require widening the roadway. What do you see out there today pretty much maximizes the existing right of way on 175th Street. The space that's there is being used. So when we do have community discussions about um, Additional improvements, sidewalks and new lanes, uh, planker strips, turn pockets, uh, even pedestrian overpasses require additional land. These are um, impactful to the community, and there's a cost to both on the personal scale to those that live on the corridor, as well as you know just a, a cost of uh, money cost. So this is really, in my opinion, the crux of the project. We have to balance the benefits and needs of the corridor in the community with the impacts and the costs that are um, paired with those improvements. And so widening is, is not a given, but it is an option on the table, um, and it's something we would better consider. So I have a question really regarding transit-oriented corridors and stuff, particularly east-west. Um, I think it's going to be huge in the future to have this east-west transportation. Yes. And on 145th, they're taking the more minimal, minimal approach to doing that. And I'm just wondering, at the city's level, are we getting planning guidance from council on what's really required? Because 
this is just my opinion, I think without having some major expansion of the right of way, instead of improved that border, we're not going to meet the need. Okay, a couple things. I know you came in a little late. We're asking people to write their comments or questions on a card so we get through them. Yeah. Equitably. However, I want to repeat what you said because the folks in the back couldn't hear you. And it, let me paraphrase and help me if I get it wrong. But east-west connections and shoreline. So 145th, 175th, 185th, even up to 205th. We haven't really talked about that yet, but that's a state highway also. Um, 104, SR 104 is the same as 205th. East-west connectivity in the city of shoreline is really critical. And, and certain corridors, taking a minimalist approach is important to balance impacts. In other places, it might need to be where the city considers widening to really meet the need of today and into the future. Did I paraphrase well enough? It was a bit more of a comment than a question in there. Um, but please write down a question the if question there's a is, question. What, what oh, the policy the guidance. Policy guidance from the city council. Where is that landing? Yeah, where is the city policy guidance from the council landing in terms of really improving these east-west connections for our residents. To my knowledge, there has not been any pointed discussions about which corridors require more widening for transit or other, other modes. Uh, we do have a blanket citywide complete streets policy that does require every project um, to be evaluated through the lens of not just vehicles, but also transit needs, pedestrian needs, cyclist needs, Consider those for all roads. It does not mean that we end up putting all of those facilities and all those um, user groups on every road, but we must consider them. That's kind of what we're doing right now. Is we're keeping that in mind, um, acknowledging that um, dedicated transit lanes, just to throw out an idea on this roadway, would add more value for transit users, um, but it would also require more impacts, more costs. So that's part of the balance. Transit already does use this corridor, and I, I do believe they want to continue investing in the corridor so that it's on the table for, uh, for design elements. And we wrote your comment question down so we don't forget that either. Uh, funding. So how much funding do we currently have? 30% design, 100% design, final design, and or construction? How is the city's, what's the city's funding strategy for this? We have a federal grant um, paired with some local money that gets us through full design of this project. So 86.5% of our uh, current funding is federal money, and the remaining 13.5% is local money. Uh, I believe we have approximately $4 million or so for this project. That requires us to go through full design, environmental processes, uh, CEPA and NEPA, um, as well as the planning for if there are impacts to the more right of way. Um, we do not have full funding for any part of construction or if there is a need for additional right-of-way acquisition. We have some seed money there, um, but we would use what money we already have to leverage against other um, state and federal funding sources. So part of our timeline that I described, we're trying to get to um, a point early next year so we can hopefully have a community-supported project sort of vision for this corridor that we can then um, identify is this a good opportunity time to seek additional grants and those grant cycles tend to be uh, every two years for federal bond funds or every year for state bond funds so when we get to that milestone if we have something we can describe to the grant agencies as a community supported vision that will uh, hopefully seek those funds um, but these things kind of take time it's, it's an iterative process to <coughs> develop an idea before you can get funding to, to construct it. So this would likely not be a um, not be built next summer. There's no imminent construction coming up. This is likely a you know, five, six, seven year horizon before we're see, you're seeing construction activity. It's taken a long time to develop and get funding and proceed. Okay, I have a couple more question cards and we're about at the time where I'd like to wrap up. So we're going to get through these, and then we want to give you ample time to uh, go ahead and provide your feedback, which is really why we're here tonight. Uh, a couple creative solutions. So not only the overpass for pedestrians, but is a tunnel under the roadway a possibility for this corridor? 
is exactly why we need you here. No one has brought up a tunnel yet. <laughs> so, so you, we, we, we even as engineers, we try and get creative, but we still get stuck in our own way. So no one's brought up a tunnel. Um, tunnels are very expensive. I'm sure if anyone's been following the work that the state and others have been doing downtown Seattle, you've seen tunnels are very expensive and controversial um, and often, not often applied to local city streets with this type of traffic volume and concern. So I would imagine that would be very costly for the benefit we receive, um, but that's me presuming a little bit too far into the future, so that's something we can discuss, um, but it's not a, a typical thing done on a roadway of this nature. However, it was done for the interurban trail in Montlake Terrace. And the comment was, however, it was done for the interurban trail in Montlake Terrace. Yeah. So Over a million dollars for about 80 feet. Okay. Um, sidewalks to school, high priority, and this one's a bit related. Is there a possibility of the blinking yellow lights at Ashworth and 175th, like there is at Ashworth and 185th? Um, I assume, I think this is like those, um, you know, button activated crossings to alert drivers that there's pedestrians around there. There is one at the school crossing, um, not at Ashworth, but down the hill slightly at Wallingford. That was implemented about two years ago. Um, that would be on the table. That's, that's this type of design element we would consider if warranted at Ashworth. Um, that's something that we would absolutely consider. This is back to the story that 185th and Ashworth together, two different stops. There's a yellow light on the blue line and stuff down the other side. That's what we have. Yeah, so, so to expand on that, there are multiple ways. You've probably seen them throughout the region of pedestrian crossings. There's different types of treatments, different types of signals that would be used. And they have pros and cons, and uh, the context is dependent on what you need. So we would consider improved crossings throughout the corridor, and if they're warranted, we would actually put them in the project. And with all of these ideas, I encourage you to mark exactly where you think that might be a good idea on that roll plot map out in the middle. That's exactly what we need. Um, just one more comment. Please consider better signage, access for Ronald Bog, railing for separation of pedestrians from cars, or some separation, uh, railing or otherwise, a possibility of a center divider to manage access to and from different driveways and crossings and sequencing lights at Meridian. So with that, Thank you. Great questions. I'm sure some of you had very similar ones. It's good to go through. Uh, again, I promised Dylan's contact information if you want to jot this down. This information is also on the fact sheet you would have grabbed at the sign-in table. We also have uh, business cards for Dawn if that's something you would like as well. And we'll linger up here for a little while in case you have questions you'd like to ask us one-on-one -on -one up here. And otherwise, our whole team will be out in the lobby to really help you provide your feedback. So please don't forget to do that before you leave. Thank you very much.